So we are just outside of Ben Miller here. So I wanted to actually start and show you. This is now September 1st, so we are a week and a half after the tornado went through. And this is what Ben Miller is looking like now. see the path pretty clearly. The tornado went through Ben Miller? Yeah, came all the way up here too. Then how did it get up here? Of course we're coming up to the Ben Miller Inn here as we turn left. We're this close to Godridge, yeah. This is just the landmark, probably the only landmark that I know. You should have there put something in it. You missed some bad trees. parts, really, really bad parts. Mom, yeah. you missed some really, really bad parts mm -hmm. of it. There's no leaves on trees. No. And over here, Across the bridge. So here we are at the main beach in Godridge, and it's looking like a gorgeous summer day. September 1st, kind of the last hurrah at summer. Looks like nothing's different. People enjoying the beach, including my guys. And then we pan over here, though, to the salt mine. And a not so normal Godridge summer day. Trying to get things back to normal. It's a very strange mix down here at the beach. We've got lots of normalcy going on here. We've got reading on the beach, playing with the waves, boats, sailing in and out of the harbor. But in the background we've got lots of sounds of machines doing their recovery, working away, hauling away, debris still. Lots of cleanup going on. Gorgeous summer day. There are some people at the beach, but not nearly as many as you would normally see on a day like today. So driving back from the cove, we're now at St. Christopher's Beach. Not too much here. You can see some of the branches down on some of the trees. We've got the pole just hanging there. There's some trees there. You can see the salt line though off in the distance there. First part of God, which that was good. It's good to see the green trucks running. See the elevators though back there. Heavily damaged. Alright, so here we are, September 2nd. Another gorgeous day. Very warm already. It's only about 10 in the morning. And I'm gonna take a walk around just to show you what Goddard is looking like about 11 days later now. 13. Yeah, 12 days later, so we're almost at two weeks. So there's the Rexall, open for business. Background, we've got a crane there with the Victoria Street United Church. The windows have been put back in, TD Canada Trust, they're working away, getting that ready to open again. 
and we're gonna take a walk down Elgin back towards Picton and St. David Street which if you saw my last walk around or any of the pictures it was just totaled so we'll take a look and see what it looks like today and this is something simple but can I tell you how good it feels to see traffic just flowing normally through this intersection the last time I was here this was well there was no hydro and there was police officer directing traffic and there was not nearly as much traffic going through this this actually feels normal still walking along Elgin and a lot more of the cleanup has been done in the past week and what strikes me here is just how bare it is you can see things you never used to see when you were looking in these directions. Trees obscured the view. You can see the evaporator plant through there above the houses. Lots of boarded up windows. You see notes everywhere on the houses which is just amazing. So I guess that looks like a chimney on that car. And again, more notes. come along here, we've got houses where people have lived for, you know, their whole lives, 40 years. Whoop, sorry. And uh, yeah, now they're gonna, this is the only home they've known. And again, we're getting back to my old stomping grounds. As a little side note too, I feel utterly useless because I left my house in Kitchener yesterday and I forgot my work shoes and my gloves. Um, so I'm actually walking around in my flip flops today. But yeah, so here we go. This tree here actually shows just how, look at this, how massive this is to have been ripped out. It's just incredible. Here we've got a closer look at, I used to say John Jeffrey and Sons. So their lumber yard here ended up actually in a lot of these houses all over the place. Volunteers worked tirelessly to sort through everything here. if you see there it's the couple that was scheduled to get married the Saturday following the tornado and they ended up still getting married which is great they had to move their wedding of course because their reception was in the Knights of Columbus Hall which is as of still today the emergency center today's actually the last day and the Knights of Columbus Hall will be getting back to business as usual and they've served thousands of meals there, helped thousands of people uh, in the last week and a half after the tornado. And again, we've got some messages on the house. One of my favorites. Yeah, you can 
see the evaporator plant back there, which actually has been given the go-ahead as far as I know. It's been deemed structurally sound, so they're into rebuilding, repairing, getting everybody back to work. Got the flag in Picton Street there that's been propped up, placed there by some of the residents on the street. So we just came up Picton, I walked up Elgin then Picton, now I'm making my way back down Park Street and then I'm going to go over to St. David. Uh, I know somebody was asking me about H.O. Jerry's, well this is, this is it, he fared okay, uh, which is great actually, I think some roof damage, I'm not sure about the internal, if he lost any stock guessing probably, but it looks like he did okay. Um, considering the damage around the area, it's amazing. So again, we're coming up on the other side now of John Jeffrey and Son uh, Lumberyard. So again, we're about 12 days after the tornado touchdown. see the back there tarped of what used to be John Jeffrey and Son building. So we're coming up to the corner of Park and Cambria. Obviously this corner did not fare very well. Direct path of the tornado that came through. And again, just the messages that are on. I can't even fathom what it must be like to see a note like that on your own home, which says, house structure not sound, main support wall collapsing, do not enter. So actually, we're still on park, heading back down towards the highway. This isn't, I didn't actually walk down this road on my first walk through. You can see back through there, Elgin Ave, where we originally came up. Again, got a lot of roof damage, and then this one just just gone. So we've got demolition going on here at the church. I'm not sure how much is going to be saved. I know there's been some heritage groups here because some of the building is apparently structurally sound, so um, I know they're hoping to save some of the church. So we're still not quite at 100% power in the town. And I know somebody was asking about Knox Presbyterian Church, so I just wanted to show you it is fine. Um, there is some work going on there, so I'm not sure they might have had a little bit of roof damage. Uh, there is a tarp and a ladder and such going over there, so there might be something. Uh, I'm going to make my way up East Street and see if I can see the square a little bit more. This might not be the best intersection to try to actually cross the road, we'll see. Okay, so on this angle here for the Knox Presbyterian Church, you can see up there on the roof, I guess there was a little bit of damage, so it looks like nothing major. The church is still fine. Coming up East Street, we're actually approaching it's called the red zone. Anywhere we've got those cement blocks and fences is a do not enter, no trespassing. Get a little bit closer here though. So we are on East Street, Bank of Montreal. See back 
behind there is a building where the Goddard's Grill was. There was lots of work going on here. Post office. And there's, of course, stories everywhere. The Creative Cuts, for example, here on Hamilton Street is inviting or has invited uh, one of the other hairdressers who had space on the square who cannot run her business to work out of um, her salon, which is awesome. Uh, again, the spirit of the town is just incredible. Strangers helping strangers, friends helping friends, everybody coming together to make sure this town gets back on its feet as quickly, as painlessly as possible. So we've got the view from Hamilton Street up towards the square. Again, nobody's being allowed actually on the square. Um, we're getting closer than we were before. Those of you who know the town, this is just, this is unbelievable. Like that, you couldn't see the courthouse before. It was just, there was trees everywhere. <sighs> the gazebo is leveled. me to get up again as I leave the bench where I just sat and had a good cry we are between uh, between Hamilton Street and we're going back out here now to North Street these are actually back driveways and alleys I've never been in because I would always walk on the square. So another view of the square looking from North Street. Oh god. I don't know why it's hitting me a lot harder this time but maybe it's because the trees are actually cleared and it's just so bare. Just summer day like this, nice and warm. A little windy, but warm. Oh, the sounds I should be hearing are people walking and laughing and talking and enjoying ice cream and going to the stores, and complaining that it's September already and where did the summer go? But all you can hear are beeps and machines, crashing of wood and metal and clean up. <sighs> okay, so we've got the view from Colburn Street, again looking on the square, the corner where Fincher's is. And then looking towards West Street where the tornado came up, so it came from our right came up through this way, took out all the trees on that side, and then made its way, can't quite see, but just to the right of the block where uh, the Bank of Montreal is. Just right through the, right through the damn center of town. <sighs> all those century trees, these heritage buildings. And we've got the back of West Street. Crews working to try to, I'm guessing, restore hydro.
and we are walking down St. Patrick Street. Again, the end of this street was very, very hard hit. Again, looking towards West Street. So here we are on St. Patrick Street, down at the end, towards the lake. So again, this is now 12 days, so almost two weeks after the F3 touched down, ripped right through. Imagine being in that house when it came down. And again, what will strike anybody that's from here is just how barren it all is now. Okay, so I'm walking along Wellington Street here, and I just wanted to take you down here, actually go in behind the grain elevators. It's the So we're in behind the grain elevators here. Again, just look at the size of the trees that came down. And again, you didn't see the grain elevators from here. It was all covered and it came right through basically there. So here we are, gives you a bearing where we are, um, the end of Wellington Street at St. George. See the back of the grain elevators. Again, I believe they're structurally sound. It was just the, yeah, it was like a lot of that debris ended up up here on the square. Again, houses that were shielded and hidden. I think the word for the town really is just exposed. It's just exposed. Again, walking back up Wellington Street towards west. People working all over the town. And again, we're almost two weeks in now, so imagine the cleanup that's been going on for the last 12 days. Good to see people hopefully getting their lives back on track pretty quickly, at least as far as their houses. A lot of people's employment has been affected as well, which is the, the other huge devastating factor to this tornado is that it went through downtown. It hit, first of all, the mine, which is the biggest employer 
in town since, since Volvo left. And then went right through downtown too. So not only did it get houses, it got livelihoods. So. Alright, so now we are actually walking down, up, whatever you want to call it, down West Street towards the Beach Hill, towards the Park House. And I'm bringing you down here because when I drove down here yesterday, I was actually just awestruck when I looked into Lions Harbor Park in here and just the view that you have now. Again, you have to see the before pictures to completely appreciate this or be from here. But this was a completely treed, lush, green park. And the view that you have now is just, well, look, it's just, it's, like I said, it's just barren and, like I said, exposed. And you can get a good view, actually, of the grain elevators back here. So again, coming up on the back of the grain elevators where the, the tornado went right through. I'm assuming that's probably part of them there on the ground. The equipment, playground equipment, the trees. see through to the salt mine you should not be able to see that salt and again just all the trees that were sheared off like the size of that one over there and the park house which remarkably did okay didn't get I don't think any damage actually So we are at West and Wellington. Again, cleanup crews all over the place, all over town. And it actually looks like some of these houses that last week looked like they were just toast actually just need to be fixed, I think, which is good news. Okay, so here we are at Waterloo and West Street, the beach behind us, coming up to the square, again, the Thomas Trust office, where it used to be. Looking down Waterloo Street. I think we're going to be able to walk up towards there. Around the fence. Opening soon to this location. So this is what West Street looks like. 
looks like now. I know a lot of people have been wondering about culverts. This is what they look like right now. I'm not sure what their estimate is on opening. Let's see. So here we are along West Street as far as we're gonna get. Again, these businesses and homes, apartments up there, we're just told. Chairs from there ended up way down there. They've since been removed. I'm also amazed looking at the destruction around the town hall that there's not damage, especially considering all the the additions, the glass. Like, look at it, this is all still just perfect, really. It doesn't look like it got any damage. So now we're on Lighthouse Street, again coming up towards the square. We've got the back of the library here. Again, very minimal damage. They're open for business. some damage at the church there and the steeple. Got the West Street Dental Clinic open for business. And now we're coming up to the back of Coffee Culture, which is the first picture that I saw of what had actually happened on August 21st. And until I saw this picture, I didn't really believe it had been as destructive or catastrophic as it actually was. And then I, <laughs> somebody posted this was bad. Not sure if you noticed, there's still a vehicle under there. Or actually more than one. So we're coming back around. Again, we've got apartments up there with people in the coffee culture. And just, again, how just bare everything is. I know I say that over and over, but I just I can't believe it. Yeah, there's a couple of the very angry and confused displaced bees. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of this place beast in Godridge. Things you'd never have thunk. Anyway, um, some of you were wondering about the livery. Here it is. It did fine. So we are on South Street at the square here. So I'm coming back up now by the Legion towards the Burger Bar, Godridge Grill, back towards the square. Pharma Plus. The church looks like they've got two of the roof beams, whatever you call them, down, working on a third. And it's very, very humid today, quite windy, so that equals, uh, that equals this <laughs> for the hair. Um, yay, attractive, I know. But anyway, so yeah, we are coming up. It's nice to see the credit union is in business, up and running. They're just through the trees there. Again, still lots of debris about the town. Again, approaching the red zone. 
can't go any further. In the car wash where it actually collapsed on some people. It miraculous that that they uh, there weren't more fatalities. Oh, hello, angry displaced bee. Yeah, might as well use those gates for gating. So here we are again. Kingston Street. And I'm sure the police officers are really sick of seeing people with cameras and wanting to take pictures and video and all that sort of stuff. So again, this doesn't look too much different than it did last week better shot of the square than last week. Again, a lot of the cleanup has been done. Chisholm's and Carmen's and Goddard's Grill and of course the River Bar. And again, I'm assuming a lot of the damage to the Burger Bar is from that building falling on it. And there's the credit union back in business. car wash was. And again, looking back on Victoria Street United Church with the, the rafters coming down. So that's pretty much it for my tour for now. I'm going to head back to my car. Let this sink in. So here we are at Britannia, the old champion Volvo plant. evaporator plant now looks like. Lots of people working away actually trying to get it back up and running as quickly as possible. In the background here on Walnut Street, 